All right, it's January. Happy New Year. Uh, today we're going to discuss one of the easiest trees to identify in the eastern woods, easiest hardwoods, uh, because it gives us a lot of hints very long into the winter. Um, this is American Beech, Fagus grandifolia. So grandifolia means large leaf. Let's start there. Um, again, these leaves will persist pretty late um, into the winter time. This is actually potentially a defense mechanism against herbivory. Um, by having these leaves protecting the buds through the winter, especially lower, you'll notice there's not really a lot of leaves that persist higher in the trees. Um, when leaves persist lower in the trees, that's giving a little bit of protection against deer in particular. Um, that would be gobbling up the buds otherwise. Um, we're going to talk a lot about the ecology of beech, but it is a uh, shade-tolerant specialist of currently forested areas, so this is actually a really valuable uh, defense mechanism while they're still small and in the understory. Um, so let's look at those leaves that persist. Um, they are elliptical in shape, really nothing uh, too special to look at. They do have an acuminate tip, and they do have very light serrations on the edge. Um, I grabbed to demonstrate uh, this is a birch leaf. Um, so beech sounds a lot like birch. Um, it is uh, not in the same family as birch. Um, it's not even related, even though, again, this is a, I actually believe this is a musclewood leaf, um, which is in the birch family. They look very, very similar, um, but this is actually in the oak family. Uh, Fagaceae is the family, so that's the beech family, but oaks are uh, more closely related to beeches than um, birches are. Uh, so on that note though, um, one feature that does also, besides the leaves, kind of look like a little bit like some of our birch species, um, the buds can kind of look a little bit somewhat like some of our birch species as well, but very distinctive buds. They're very long, very tapered, very cigar shaped. Um, the scales are pretty distinctive. Uh, this is a very classic uh, uh, beech stem beech bud. So really easy to identify. And then finally, the trait that's most easy to identify them by is the bark. Very smooth bark. Uh, this is only one of two species that at maturity is going to have smooth bark in our woods. Um, it's this or American holly. This is obviously not American holly, so we have beech. Um, not only is that bark really smooth, but uh, if you see names carved into trees, uh, shapes, drawings, whatever, it's almost certainly American beech because this is the only thing that has that smooth bark. So a lot of identification books, even going back hundreds of years, will uh, say in it that if you have carvings, then it's likely uh, in a mature tree, it's likely an American beech. Um, let's talk a little bit about the ecology um, and the ecology of just that bark itself. So I said this is a specialist of currently forested areas. Um, it is very shade tolerant, so you will mostly see it um, in, you know, oak hickory forests, uh, maple forests too. Those trees will persist in very deep shade for years, decades, decades, decades. And then finally, because they can persist, eventually they will be given enough sunlight by other trees succumbing to just natural mortality or being logged or whatever, um, and then the American beech will be able to take the place in the canopy, whether those trees are removed or they are just uh, uh, dying slowly over time. Um, its strategy is to wait it out and eventually become a member of the canopy there. So having this very smooth bark, where there's no obstruction, there's no structure like we normally have furrows and plates and scales and all sorts of stuff that's going to protect from, uh, from fire and, and other things. Um, the beach is less concerned with that and more concerned with allowing a little bit of pho photosynthetic potential even when it's here in the understory, not getting a lot of light on its leaves. So it's, it has more photos photosynthetic potential um, than a lot of other trees around it, which is uh, a nice adaptation. So there's a reason why we have that smooth bark. Um, as far as just being a member of the woods, we do have beech nuts um, that are edible by humans. They're mostly, there we go, I have one in, in my pocket, a separate one. Um, so these, a dog hair on that one, wonder where that came from. Um, these nuts will open up and they will hold uh, usually three or four little, there we go, oops, that one just popped right out. Um, uh, it'll hold yeah, a few beech nuts that just slip in there. Um, very important food source for turkey, deer, uh, grouse, um, squirrels, uh, all sorts of uh, forest uh, specialist species. Again, humans can eat them too, but uh, it takes 40, 50 years for them to start producing nuts, um, and uh, you know, not a lot of nutrition in these. So, but 
we eat, we eat smaller things. You know, pine nuts are a lot smaller, but not a very major food source. Uh, it's also not a super useful species for timber. Um, it rots very quickly. Um, it, it, it's, it's not the hardest thing, the most hardy wood, um, but it is used for certain uh, very specific applications. Um, it bends very easily when heated up, um, so people will use it for furniture, bowl making, that sort of thing. Uh, mostly in the forestry world, um, foresters don't like it here in Appalachia because it is so shade tolerant that oftentimes it is going to be out competing over time um, against our species that need a lot of sunlight on the forest floor that are often the species that we're selecting for um, like our oak species and our hickories namely uh, mostly we're concerned with our oaks and we're concerned with competition of beaches against those oaks because they will form that beach brush all the little saplings on the forest floor um, that don't need much sunlight whereas the oaks do and then they're going to be a low umbrella casting shade on the forest floor inhibiting the oak regeneration also they will stump sprout like crazy so you cut one down and more will come up everywhere and foresters call that beach brush something to manage against but it's not a bad species um, really nice thing to have it's cool that we have something that is so shade tolerant in our forests um, we just you know like everything else need to make sure it's not taking over everything forming a monoculture but there you have it american beach a uh, really fun tree to see around and uh, one that you should be able to identify all year